Back issues of Sal. Nathan. And I'm Tiffany. We're going to talk about the saga of the alien costume. <gasps> We're doing saga. Yeah, finally. A Everybody saga. asked for it. We're going to do a saga yeah, of the alien costume from Spider Man. Uh, Is it called that because at this point in time they didn't have like stories of arcs? Yep. What you will now experience are a series of seemingly unconnected stories <laughs> that also feature the alien costume until they don't. <laughs> that's what? what they used to do yep. uh, there is like an ongoing plot but it mostly yeah. has to do with Peter Parker and the like saga of his life right? and okay. it also including and the alien to be costume. An alien costume yes and uh, why are they calling it the alien costume because it's the costume that is also an alien that he gets from Secret Wars it's before it was anything else yes right. that's what I'm saying before right. it was Venom right yes. right uh, they didn't know about Venom when this was. Well, they finished. knew. Well, Venom is an alien costume, and so yeah. even when, but they, but they and, didn't know it was going to become Venom. Well, when they, so made, they weren't calling it the symbiote. Well, they no, they actually called it the symbiote back then. Oh, they then. do. Yeah, they coined oh. the phrase in this book. Yeah, uh, but well, they don't. They, they refer to it as the alien costume saga, not the symbiote saga. No, they don't. So the 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 alien costume saga, at least this volume, but like for the most part, like when. The story of Peter Parker continues from Secret Wars. The idea is that the heroes, all the popular ones, are gone. They just disappeared. They all went into like a thing in Central Park and disappeared. Mm. Mm. And so we see the Daily Bugle's portrayal of that where they're like, where are they as a headline? And they just have a bunch of images of the heroes. Just their heads. Just their heads. Yep. And I love how they're talking about it. You know, they're talking about like the, the design of the cover. We go further, we get to like look at the different perspectives on what's going on. Like Mockingbird is a hero that was not selected for the Secret Wars, mm -hmm. but she just married Hawkeye, who was in the Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. And so we show her and it's like, newly married Mockingbird, worried about where Hawkeye might be. <laughs> like Scarlet Witch being like, why didn't they call me? Uh -huh. Like how come Scarlet Witch looking disappointed at the reader saying like how come there aren't many women in the Secret Wars? Mm, yeah. So Peter comes home, and he's immediately like, yay. I'm like, home. I'm back. I don't go into space. Right. That's uncomfortable for me. Yeah, I'm Ugh. a street-level hero. I'm back home. So he just jumps around. He's having an awesome time. He's like, gravity, you're awesome. Yes, yeah. he's like, he's he meets up with a constable and like kisses them on a face like friggin' Looney Tunes. <laughs> I was like, did you say constable? Yeah. Yeah. Look at his uniform. <laughs> that is not a policeman. He is a constable. <laughs> he is an old-fashioned word for a policeman. <laughs> yes. So the Avengers show up, and everyone's like, "Oh, look, more popular characters." Oh, they go all over there. Divert, Everyone rush over. There. They all do, and then Spider-Man's like, "Sweet." So then he swings Connors out of there because he doesn't want Connors to have to explain why he was drafted. Mm. Uh, so then he goes to grab his clothes, but he's been gone so long, his clothes are turned into a bird's nest, and he's like, "Damn it!" He, like he like kind of like awkwardly pulls out his driver's license and other things and he's like well my keys are still in here and then he puts his keys against his tummy and the suit absorbs the keys against his tummy though yeah yeah well because that's where he puts everything like he keeps his camera there yeah. like he keeps yeah. his spider belt so there they give you a close up of his crotch and yeah and his wishing gem yeah you do want to see yeah his yeah. gem area so <laughs> spider-man unites connor's with the rest of his family and then oh. he goes home and he's like and he, he illustrates to the reader, like, my costume is crazy and different. And he doesn't know it's an alien. He just thinks it's super fabric. He thinks right. it's alien fabric. Well, because it is, came out of a, of a machine, right? Well, he, he came out of a machine that, that, that I think Made. Thor and Johnny Storm indicated was a costume machine. Yes. And Spider-Man just got in the wrong machine. Yep. Why would you put those two machines near one another? Well, they didn't know they did that. It, it's not their technology. It was an alien place, domicile, full of alien technology. Yeah. And they to only alien had... intelligence, it made perfect sense. Yeah, no, like how could you get those mixed up? No, but it doesn't. <laughs> they look totally I'm different. Just... Yeah. Well, in that any one case, looks clearly like a costume machine. That one clearly looks like a thing that secretes alien goo. Now, before we get into the the the, the moral. Before we get deeper into the story, null God of the Symbiotes fans, 
This is before all that. Oh, they don't even know it's a... This is before the retconning of, like, the fact that the suit was hiding in a machine that it wasn't even... So it wasn't even like it was a symbiote making machine. It was hiding there. We're not going to get into the Deadpool retcon. The Deadpool came to the Secret Wars 2, and it got the symbiote first, and his madness infected the... No. What? Forget That's all a, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a huge retcon. It's called Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars. Is that, that's recent, right? Yeah. But we're not going to talk about that. Right. We're going to talk about this bare bones concept where superhero street level character Peter Parker gets a costume from the stars <laughs> that's also an alien symbiote that's trying to bond with him. That's all we know. Yeah. And like a lot of people have a lot of preconceived ideas about what the suit is because of the cartoon show yeah. and the movie and the, and the Venom character. And so let me dispel a lot of the stuff that was retconned out. The suit is an alien symbiote that wants to bond with Peter. That's all. It's alive. It doesn't feed on his adrenaline. It doesn't make him stronger. All it is is an alien costume. Well, then it has webs that it can shoot out of itself. Yes, it, it, and it can morph around and like hold things. For and it. it can change its look into regular clothing. Yeah, it can simulate. So it gives him clothing. like a couple new abilities. Yes, but it's like not... making clothes. Yes, we're right. revamping Spider-Man. This is what uh, would be called like a revamp right. later on. Uh, and he illustrates that to the reader by it being like, "Okay, I'm Spider-Man, but watch this," and the suit just changes into like. Black clothes. Mm. It doesn't have to be black, by the way. It can be any color. It's I was going to be like, oh, Peter's black. new look is just all black clothes. I'm yes. an artist during whatever time period this is. <laughs> yeah. I need a beret and some coffee. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, he reveals that he hasn't shaved in days. And he's like, my Aunt May will have a heart attack if she sees me with the five o'clock shadow. So he's got to like take care of that. Calls Aunt May. In this period of Spider-Man's life, which is 1984, Spider-Man is living in his own apartment. He is casually dating Black Cat. He has dated Mary Jane mm -hmm. and failed. And now they're friends. Okay. Just friends. Wink. Aunt May has turned her house into a kind of like Golden Girls situation where like old people board in the house. Oh. And so she's like renting out rooms and stuff. And okay. so she hangs out with all these old people. And this is their way of kind of like in story making it so that Peter doesn't have to dote on Aunt May all the time. Right. And he didn't have to put her in an old age home. Yes. She made her own. She created her own. <laughs> yeah. And she makes a tidy profit off as well. Mm -hmm. uh, through that process, she met a guy who is wheelchair bound named Nathan Lebensky, who is a chronic gambler and will later be murdered by the vulture. But let's not get into that now. Let's just focus on the fact that there's a fledgling romance between Aunt May and this doomed old man. <laughs> Yep. Could call May. May you know how to pick them. Constantly. <laughs> Let's go down the list. She killed Uncle Ben. She killed Nathan Lebensky. She killed J. Jonah Jameson's father. She's the Black Widow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he calls Aunt May. He checks in with her. He's like, sorry, I was really busy. She's like, that's fine. I'm getting laid. So <laughs> I don't care. And uh, so Peter leaves the apartment. Black Cat comes in and she's like, oh, like... Peter's still not home. Like, I wasn't drafted in the Secret Wars, so I don't know what's going on. Right. You, you so, gonna read the newspaper? Yeah, well, she didn't pick up. Well, the okay. newspaper said, where are they? The yeah. newspaper hasn't come out yet. Uh, but she, Black Cat's status quo is, they're together. He revealed his identity to her. She had a freak out, left, and then got herself some superpowers to help Spider-Man out in the field. So through surgery, she went, she winds up getting Black Cat bad luck power. Right. So if she crosses your path, you are now struck by the black cat and have bad luck. What uh, organ? Whoa. Yeah, what organ secretes that on? pheromone yeah. that makes people have like klutzy behavior? Just... Don't get into it any deeper than she had surgery and it was an ordeal. Uh, she <laughs> also is afraid of telling Peter about that because he wouldn't approve of me doing it but I'm not really but big you, on doing things that men tell me to do anyway. But she did it for him. Yes, but also now I'm in this moral quandary of like, what do yeah. I do? And it's not yeah. like he's ever going to leave me and marry someone else. No, especially not like while she's away. Like she goes on vacation and then he marries Mary Jane. He's and like, then, quick, we have to get right, right now. Yeah, and then they move and then she goes to their old apartment and then Venom's there and he breaks her nose. Poor Felicia. <laughs> 
So, well, who tells you to go and get a questionable surgery on an organ that doesn't well, actually exist? I agree. Yeah. So uh, Peter hangs out of the apartment after Black Cat leaves and gives some exposition. Even his patchwork quilt. You know Aunt May made that for him. Oh my Peter's god, Peter's yes. apartment is full of random tchotchkes that the artist and or the writer had in their own crappy one-bedroom New York apartment, which includes, like, a smoking Indian statue, <laughs> like, quilts and weird lamps and mismatched furniture. I actually noticed a while ago, as a kid, I associated New York apartments mm -hmm. with, like, being full of junk and mismatched everything. And I had older cousins who lived in Manhattan who helped to corroborate that theory. <laughs> so this is not too far off. Peter decides to develop some film from his experience in the Secret Wars. Oh, he and had a camera? Yeah. Well, he always has his camera on. Yeah, okay. But uh, he, he develops does he, them. Does he pop it out of his crotch there? Yes. Well, he does now that he keeps it in his alien costume. <laughs> the idea is that the alien costume reads his thoughts. So he's like, I should get my camera. Then the alien costume's like, here you go. And he's like, oh, it responds to my thoughts. How convenient. Let's not look into this any deeper. I would have been like, that's creepy. That's yeah. weird. I should oh. call Reed Richards immediately. He doesn't until the end of the book. I won't think that, though, because it's going to know that I want to do that. Exactly. Let's call for a pizza. <laughs> four, 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 I, four, 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 yeah, without just thinking dial about fours it. until Reed Richards picks up the yeah. phone. So uh, he ultimately decides that like no one would believe the photos that he took. And how would I explain that I took how Peter them? Peter Parker got there. So he just ruins them? He destroys them. But also Reed Richards tells all the heroes, don't tell anyone about the secret wars, <laughs> thereby making them secret, because that would make people freak out. The hundred foot planet eating man in a giant purple costume might have been the first indicator that there's life on other planets. But no, the patchwork battle planet where we had to like have action figures smash against each other, that will make humanity lose their goddamn yeah. minds. <laughs> Regardless, Peter decides, like, after developing these film, <laughs> I, I guess I'll just keep Reed's secret. Me meanwhile, most of like Earth is like, oh no, they went off to fight some crazy alien space war. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, meanwhile, everyone else We just all figured it out, okay? Yeah. We're not stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please. So uh, Peter tries to go to bed. He wakes up. He's like, I can't sleep. So the alien costume hears his thoughts, goes over to him, gets on him. He's like, sweet! All right! So he's swinging around. He's having an awesome time. And we're establishing like this new status quo of Peter and this new lease on life because he's like back from freaking the depths of space and oblivion. Mm -hmm. Peter swings by this young teenage couple who are screaming at each other because like one of them promised the other, that he was going to get tickets to her favorite concert and then backed out. And he's like, well, they suck. <laughs> and Peter's like, hey, hey, hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop arguing with each other. Life is great. It could be worse. You could be on a doomed planet made of other planets and be forced to fight against random people like Dr. Doom and the Beyonder. And they're like, what? That is strangely specific. So then he grabs the two of them and he kidnaps them and he swings them across the city and shows them how awesome it is to be Spider-Man. And he takes them and he throws them back into the machine so they have to go The machine it. disappears. Damn so, it. So it's like if Spider-Man took you on an It's a Wonderful Life journey. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, this isn't my life. You're showing me your life. What are, what are you doing? Yeah, but that's all I have context for. <laughs> By the way, you're a loser. Also, watch out for your girlfriend's neck. So he shows them like all of New York from a bird's eye view and he's like, look at the city. This is your city and it's got million stories and they're all like, some of them are sad, but most of them are hopeful and you got to believe in yourself and blah, blah, blah. And like the, the guy is like, that's weird and stupid. And when he drops them off, he runs away terrified of the ordeal. Right. But the young lady is like, thanks, Spider-Man. That was weird, but I think I've learned something. And he's like, well, that's the lesson of today. So I'm going to leave. 50% ain't bad. But first, I'm going to, like, dislocate my shoulder to do so. <laughs> the artist dislocates it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> breaks up this couple. Okay, oh, cool. Oh, they were broken up before. Right. He was, he was he watching He seals the deal. Yeah. Yeah. So he removes the awkwardness because he, you know, interrupts it. And then the guy has an excuse to just run away and stop talking about Precisely. it. Precisely. He's like, I'm going to Danny catch my way out of this one. <laughs> I'll leave. <laughs> so the rest of the book is just stuff that happened in Spider-Man in the 80s. Right. There's no, like, things... through line except for the suit. Yeah, except for the fact that he's wearing a friggin' suit. There is at least one major villain reveal, like his first appearance in the story. Oh. And there's a couple of, like, reinforced, who's that supposed to be? Super villains in this book, which include characters like The Rose, a character you wouldn't see for, in a long time. Uh, the Rose is secretly Wilson Fisk's son, who is a rival mobster. He is identified by wearing a full face mask with glasses. 
and matching colored gloves. The rose is looking to supplant or usurp the kingpin and his influence while also maintaining the secret of his parentage from his associates. But they establish like the Rose and also that the Rose is in cahoots with another supervillain, the Hobgoblin. Oh. The Hobgoblin was a huge yeah. goddamn deal at Spider-Man during this time. Uh, nobody knew who the Hobgoblin was. I was going to say, which Hobgoblin is it? It was the Roderick Kingsley Hobgoblin. Okay. Uh, but... Roderick Kingsley Hobgoblin was working with another bad guy named Jason Mackendale, and Jason Mackendale would later on also occupy the role as the Hobgoblin when he wasn't also being the Jack-O-Lantern. And the Jack-O-Lantern is a rip-off. Okay, so here's the deal. Really quick, I don't want to get into the Hobgoblin too much because there's a whole book. No, no, we do I don't really care Hobgoblin. about the Hobgoblin at this point. There's... But no, the Hob. Okay, so there's Green Goblin, right. Right? right? Green Goblin. Yep. Yeah. Blade. Well, original Goblin. Yeah. Well. Roger Kingsley gets the equipment of Norman Osborn's Green Goblin stuff, and then he becomes a sub-goblin, Hobgoblin. Right, but he, pairing sub orange goblin. with his green. He paints yes. it orange. Well, any any change of the color of green to, to Making flesh. you think of pumpkins. Yes, which is actually more appropriate with the arsenal that Green Goblin has at his disposal. Right. Then Jack-O-Lantern is an even more sub-goblin. He drops the goblin persona entirely, but keeps the pumpkin theme. <laughs> <laughs> Drops the glider, turns it into one of those bouncy things with the discs. You remember those from the what? 80s? What? With the balls? Yes. It's a ball with a disc on it. No! It flies and bounces. That's no. amazing. And Jack-O-Lantern... He sucks! He, Jack-O-Lantern is a formidable opponent in this no, story. No, he's nuts! But Jack-O-Lantern... trying to make him feel better about himself because he sucks. Uh, he <laughs> does suck. He is that. And Mackendale's not the only... Jack o' Lantern. How was he a goblin at all? Well, because he stole equipment from Kingsley and his goblin gear, which is in and of itself a derivative of the Green Goblin gear. Right. So he's and so the Green he becomes, Goblin twice removed. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I can't be like the the the, the orange goblin. I'm gonna drop the goblin thing entirely and just yeah. go full pumpkin. All right. So I'm gonna steal stuff from him and I'm gonna become the Patty Pan because that's like a squash. <laughs> that's that's so stupid. And the the, the Jack Lantern's on fire. He's also on fire. Well, because awesome. you know he knows Ghost Rider. Yeah, He's yeah. Like, That's cool. And he is Obviously, a Ghost Rider villain later on. Well, a non-flaming pumpkin head is just that's stupid. Just a, that's just this well, is then, scary. Yeah. Because he obviously has it cut out and everything like that, right? And like you gotta do. I mean, you really shouldn't use a candle in there anyway. No. Right. Like, just get in, like a light. Do they, get an LED? do they yeah. explain how he can be on fire all the time? They do, but it's a very bad explanation, so I'm not going to get into <laughs> okay. it. Okay. But suffice it to say, it's just he, he will he he has a flaming head just because it magic. looks cool. It's not. Damn it. There's a whole subplot where like Hobgoblin had a battle van, and Spider-Man and the Hobgoblin had a final confrontation in like with and in the van. The van fell into the East River. Uh, Spider-Man went down to retrieve the Hobgoblin. His mask was the only thing he could retrieve. Mm. And he was like, well, that usually means they died. And so in this book, they fish the battle van out of the East River, and then they go to like bring it to the police impound. But through machinations, uh. the battle van has been absconded by nefarious forces. The, the method through which they do it is brilliant. They hire a hot chick to drive up next to the guys who are towing the van in a convertible. She flashes her goodies at them while a crane magnetizes the van and just <laughs> takes it away from them. With the cops? No, because it's a flatbed, it just takes the van. Because normally when you transport large vehicles via flatbed, you just park it on top and yeah. don't strap it in no. at all. Oh no, yeah. Well, why would you do that? Yeah, you wouldn't just strap it, it'll probably stay up there. Yeah. It's pretty heavy. When you go around and like tie corners and stuff, it's not going to fly off. It doesn't have wheels of any kind. No. You know, it's... The, the emergency brake is on. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, they got shocks in the front and back of the wheels. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to keep it from tipping over. <laughs> Nothing. Sheer force of will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll drive real careful-like. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. Right? Uh, so that, that, that there's a subplot about, but like, who took the van? But you'll Why? know exactly who took it. it. The crane's not going anywhere, so yeah, just go to right the crane. There. Yeah, yeah, No, but they didn't notice. You see, the guys who were in town <laughs> in the didn't van... Know, they, they didn't hear that. They didn't hear oh, or notice. When did we lose they, the van? Were, it could have been were anywhere. They deafened by how hot this chick is. Yeah, that's how hot Their senses was. were blown yeah. by this woman. And, uh, yeah, no, the guys who are in the in the... the, the 
thieving lot. The thieves in their impound lot are like, they didn't even notice, lol! Like, I guess they were prepared for some kind of confrontation and then just were like, oh, I so, guess it just worked out on. great. Just, I know we're not talking about the Hobgoblin. I'm going to ask you one question. <laughs> sure, yeah, Feel no. free to not answer it. All right, yeah. all right. Hi, I'm the Hobgoblin. I have a glider. Also, check out my sweet van? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why does he have a van? I this have bad a ass. That van was really hardcore. Because it's got, like, guns and shit on it. Yeah. It had a lot of great, like, tech. Hobgoblin, so then why here, do I have the glider? Here's the deal. Here's okay, the deal. Here's okay, the thing. no. Green Goblin didn't have a van, and Spider-Man beat him. It's like, there's any number That's of The things. van is the difference maker. The van's what gives me the edge. Here's the deal Clearly about the van. did not. Here's the deal about <laughs> Hobgoblin. Green Goblin was certifiably insane, and Hobgoblin was not. So I guess you gotta have some edge. level of crazy to decide I'm going to dress like a goblin. Yes. He's definitely insane. Yes, You're but... You're just saying he's less insane. Well, Kingsley was like, no, I'm not going to limit myself to a purse full of Halloween-themed weapons and a glider. I also am going to incorporate other things, and I noticed that vans are very big in the 80s. I'm a big fan of the A-Team. Yeah, and they have a van. They don't use it all the time. It's in they every episode. It it's in every episode. They use yeah. It a lot. yeah, they don't make it into but, a battle van. But they van also every can't no. fly around on a glider. Right. But Batman if, doesn't always use the Batmobile. But if they could, B. A. Baratus you know, would be a nightmare. That, yes. <laughs> that glider doesn't have any armor on it whatsoever. No. The van's covered in armor. That's all I'm saying. I rest my case. Yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> listen, it doesn't work. The van ends up in the yeah, river and Hobgoblin is defeated. He yeah. shows up at the end of the book. He better. But the, the whole point is that Mackendale and Kingsley were working together and then sure. they have a falling out and then Mackendale winds up whipping up the, goes the, on the jack o' lantern. the yeah. jack o' lantern. Yeah, and does the jack o' lantern thing. Also, Mackendale will later on, after like Kingsley retires and frames Ned Leeds for being the Hobgoblin, uh, Mackendale takes over the Hobgoblin identity as well. And then he is killed, and then he goes to hell, and then he comes back, and he becomes Demo Goblin. But between the Demo Goblin and the Death Thing, he also becomes a demonic Hobgoblin who becomes a primary Ghost Rider villain. But that's Mackendale, who, wow. was, also, who was also Jack. So Mackendale's like four different things. Yes. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's why he's a jack of all trades. <laughs> oh. I guess, I guess Jack O' Lantern was his only actual creation all on his own. Yes. Well, no, he was the, he. Well, yes. Did he make Demo Goblin or was he made? He, into he Demo was made Goblin? into Demo Goblin. I mean, here's the thing. He, he was, was the only one though. He went by Hobgoblin even when he was a demon, but later on he changed his suit from orange to blue, and then he became Demo Goblin, and he and he went by that name. By the way, another Goblin. Yeah. Yep. Green. He went back to the Hob Demo. Between the symbiotes, in that order of popularity, by the, the way. Between the symbiotes and goblins, we gotta stop. Otherwise, we're gonna have the war of goblins and symbiotes. That, listen, we did the same uh -huh. thing with war jokes and riddles. Remember when we said, like, oh man, I'd love to see a Joker versus Riddler story, and it was the worst thing ever? I'm not saying I You want to just see pitched this. goblins versus <laughs> symbiotes, and it's gonna be a thing now! <laughs> no. Because Norman Osborn took the carnage first. suit no. and became Red Goblin. No! The Goblin Symbiote War. Yeah. <laughs> Secret yeah. goblin symbiote, symbiote war. war. Yeah, they'll, they'll be revealed that like it's like it's like the god of symbiotes and yeah, like, no versus oh the god of god. goblins, and there is yeah. this because Norman Osborn calls himself the Goblin King. There will be a real Goblin King, yeah. oh. and he looks like a real version of the costumed Green Goblin, and he's like, I'm you, you, your your Goblin formula didn't make you insane. I made you insane. Your Goblin formula gave you a conduit to reach me. No, yeah. the voice in your head that was, found me. You. was me. Yeah. You, you were my, you're my warrior. Yeah, and you, you are, made my suit. Like you approximated. You were my, you, you were my wore, avatar. You wore my armor, and you ride to battle for me. Yes. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Holy crap, that's happening. <laughs> now it's happening. <laughs> and, like, and his and his greatest nemesis is Null. Yeah. So it's Null versus the Goblin King. Yeah, and occasionally he's had issues with the Spider God, which is why. The yeah. Green Goblin is such an issue with spiders. Right, right exactly. Mm. Goblins and spiders are natural enemies. <laughs> well, in mythology, they could be okay. <laughs> I love how. Yeah, it's like, well, do you know that Spider Man, obviously, he has a whole thing with animals. It's like, it's Spider Man versus his natural enemies the octopi, the, the vulture, the goblin. <laughs> like, uh, I'm sorry, the goblin? <laughs> no, 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 let me finish. Also, the, the dinosaur man, and the kangaroo, and the gibbon, and the like lizard. all kinds of other. And yeah. the rhino? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll, I get all that. I'm just saying the goblin. But a goblin isn't real. Isn't That's like saying real your animal. favorite dinosaur is a dragon. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Did you mean, <laughs> did you mean goblin shark? That's nope, an animal. I meant an actual nope. goblin. Goblin Bob, with green, the pointy Demo, ears. doesn't matter. Yep. I love them all. And they're all natural enemies of spiders. But yeah, there you go. That's. <laughs> sorry I said that out loud now. That's happening. So uh. anyway. So Spider-Man faces off against Jack-O-Lantern. He's like, oh my God, Jack-O-Lantern. But Jack-O-Lantern's also like dangerous, also not insane as well. So he's right. like more effective than any of the other goblins. Uh, that is to say, green. Well, as effective as you can be when you're wearing a Jack-O-Lantern on your head and you can only see like a triangle. And it's also on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he has to fight. Well, okay. So it's, he, he, he winds up fighting Jack-O-Lantern, but the reality is what, he, what the impetus behind him ending up fighting Jack-O-Lantern is... Uh, he tells Aunt May that he's dropping out of graduate school and she has a freaking conniption fit. She's yeah. like, you're throwing your life away. Yeah. And I'm like, um, graduate school? That's where you put your flag, Aunt May? He's a college graduate at least. Like, yeah. give him a break. It's 84. He's already in like the 25th percentile of like Americans at this point. Yeah, but he was on a path. He was on he a path and it. then he stopped. He said he took, by the way, he didn't say I'm dropping out, I'm going to become a fashion model. He's like, I'm taking a leave of absence and she still had uh, a connection with it, which is exactly why yeah, he didn't she knows tell her you're not going back to graduate school. Yeah. Once you, the leave of absence I is, caught a look at your, at your white haired girlfriend. There's no way you're going back to graduate <laughs> school. You are on a path and I know what that path leads. It leads to porno. <laughs> So <laughs> Okay, whoa, whoa, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What a jump. We just what learned a, a whole lot about Aunt May. Yeah. And her awareness of pornography. Please, yeah. let me write Spider-Man. I will promise you all these stories will come to life. So, <laughs> no. But uh, anyway, so he leaves and like Nathan tries to convince May to like get over it. And May's like, I can't, I can't. Who's so Nathan again? Nathan oh, he's the guy. Who, yeah. who would be her fiance. Yeah, the guy's going to die. Got yeah. It. Uh, so Nathan convinces May to go out on a date and he calls up Peter and he's like, oh, and you'll end up there and then you can finally hash it out because you're both being ridiculous. And so Peter's like, got it, I'll be there in half an hour. Then he hears about how the goblin van was stolen and he's like, I gotta go after the van. The, the hobgoblin has been my greatest oh no, nemesis. Oh the goblin. What do I do? Do I keep the date with Aunt May or do I <laughs> stop the hobgoblin? Well, so he naturally goes to deal with the how, van. How about this, Spider-Man? You call up any other superhero you know. Yeah. And you tell them... There's a missing van. No, 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 no. Call, call Frank. Oh, he no. knows all about vans. Is, hello? Way is that somebody vans. calling for help? Oh, I gotta go. Yeah. This is like, this is where I'm learning something about Peter Parker. He He's any excuse. Yes. To not he deal with He wants to not do... He's like, she's mad at me? Thank God. I can actually have a minute to myself. <gasps> Because she's already busy, but yeah. like, listen. It's not a great responsibility. It's like, great responsibility is a great excuse. Yes. <laughs> that, does that sign say video game dolls? Yes. They're advertising two different things. Video games, dolls. Okay, that's really weird though, because video games and dolls are all in different fonts. Listen. So it should be video games, dolls. The most expressive character in the Toy Store fight is this bear. <laughs> Because you will see it again. There he is again. Ooh. Why is it a, This is a sentient bear. Yeah. This is the what's real What's the problem. story of the teddy bear? Yeah, what's hey, going on with that bear? Later, Spider-Man and jack o Lantern should just stop and be like, anyone else seeing this? Yeah. By the way, I also love how Ron Friends depicts the suit and Peter throughout this series. Peter is really like thin mm -hmm. and kind of like gaunt. but mm. like, the, And the suit, even when he's Spider-Man, he's illustrated that way. But like... Spider-Man, you know, when he's Ditko, it's like tiny eyes, Ramita a little bigger, McFarlane, they're the size of his mask. But like, when it's the black suit early on, when they're like, this is where we're getting our bearings, it's more like they're ovals. There's yeah. like almost no... There's, they're there's, alien. They're alien. I kind of really like they're, it. They're like, they're like a gray. Yeah. yeah. I kind of really love it. Yeah. That is cool. That's a, that's a nice homage. Especially yeah. when you put that UFO next to his head. That's I mean, true. his... Uh, no, that's the, his bouncer or whatever the hell you call it. Yeah. He does have a name for it. I don't remember it. Leave a note in the comments. It's the pie plate. Yeah, because he's a, he's a pumpkin pie. <laughs> it's the sombrero. <laughs> that is not pumpkin themed at all. I mean, it oh. is straight up a sombrero. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so Peter goes to track down the van. He ends up in a fight with the jack-o'-lantern. He misses the entire dinner. Oh, oh, and by the way, May and Nathan like have lunch and you know, May's like, why do you keep checking your, like, checking your watch and looking over your shoulder? He's like, oh, and she's like, you set up a thing with Peter, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, listen, I'll get over it, but give me time. And he's like, mm. okay. Peter never shows up. And then 
Nathan stays behind and just waits for Peter. Peter shows up, he's like, maybe there's some time. Nathan's like, hey, I stayed because you're an asshole and a bad family member. You could have had an opportunity to patch things up with your aunt and you chose to be late. That's your call. Yeah. But I'm, I'm done. I'm not, not only am I done like trying to help you, but I'm also going to be like on the anti-Peter team for the rest of my life. Like, I'm against you. Wow. Like, you're bad for my Strike girlfriend. Strike one and you're out. Yeah. Wow. I gotta tell you, this is where I could not be a superhero. Because if he started, like, saying Pick it, him up and be like, well, are you shitting I'd me? I'd be like, dude, I'm fucking Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just had fought a man with a flaming pumpkin on his head. Yeah. Give me a break. Eat yeah. shit Bring and a break. Just throw him. Seriously? It's like, I, I just weigh into it. How old are you again, Nathan? I'm anywhere between 68 and 90, based on how I'm drawn, or how Aunt May's drawn. Yeah. It's like, and you, n no one's gonna believe you. I'm Spider-Man, dipshit, pick up chair. Yeah. Knock it off, don't tell Aunt May. This is way nicer than mine. I like yours better. No. <laughs> no, because Nathan deserves it. He's a dickhead. <laughs> Nathan saw. At one point in the- I well, in my version, I threw a crippled man. Y you well, did, but <laughs> you Nathan did is a dick. Man. Yeah. But he does Nathan, deserve it. Nathan <laughs> empties Aunt May's bank account and then uses the money to bet on whether a industrialist is going to be assassinated or not. I'm glad what? I threw a fictional character. Yeah. And then Good call, he Tim. loses. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, of course. Because Spider-Man saves him. Oh, Spider-Man, you found everything. Now I have another supervillain named the Geriatric. <laughs> this is amazing because I'm reading the dialogue and yeah, I yeah. keep seeing like Aunt May talk about the Peter I know never would have dropped out of college. He's dropping out of college. Like she says no, college it's twice. grad school. You came like, to my ass. Wait, wait a minute. And I go back and Peter clearly says she's it's, upset with me because I dropped out of graduate school. Yes. Is that like a joke? Like she doesn't know? She doesn't even know the difference. Like he's been in college for six years. She's like, did you catch all your Pikachu? Damn it, Aunt May! <laughs> that hasn't been invented yet. Uh. But that's the level she's yeah. on. No, I know. It's, it's like, Did what you are you doing? Did you ask Mary Jane to the prom this the year? The prom? I'm 22 <laughs> years old, Aunt May. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah, so. so. Are we done with the jack o' lantern yet? No. no. Does so he get away? Yes, he always he gets does. away. Spoilers for goblins. In the 80s, they always get away. Unless yeah. they die That's why in they a have van. The glider. <laughs> There's another story where uh, the Black Fox, who's Ethan's favorite Spider-Man villain I of all time. Him. The old, oh, and they even try because like they've been, because friends have been drawing Peter all thin. Like uh -huh. they try to indicate that like Peter is breaking into a place because Black Fox's suit is black too. <laughs> then it's like, oh, the switcheroo. The Black Fox, <laughs> Okay, the plot of that story is the Black Fox goes to steal a priceless vase. The vase disappears, and then it turns out that it's not a vase at all. It's a hologram created by a Fantastic Four villain. The Red Ghost is a cosmic ray empowered supervillain who has control over an army of super apes, one of whom can change his shape and become like a bird. Has been defeated by the Fantastic Four so many damn times that he basically just becomes a shut-in, and he just lives in this apartment that he uh, that he uh, procures somehow. Uh -huh. He and his apes, and so he, through his resources, convinces the Black Fox to break into his apartment to steal a vase, which is an illusion. Uh -huh. Then he like gets him in his employ, and he's like, "You need to go steal electronic components so I can build my special." long named device which i believe is called like the cosminator or something the cosmicizer cosmicizer uh which will be my ultimate weapon to destroy the fantastic four fuck me if i know what that actually does because the cosmicizer gets destroyed at the end of the issue but uh black fox <laughs> is now strong armed into going outside for the red ghost to steal components for this machine so black fox and these dumb apes go to steal robot stuff spider-man shows up fights the apes, the apes leave, Spider-Man goes and chases the apes, yeah, and- They're the distraction. And Black Fox is like, the dumb apes left a bag of jewels that we stole. I'll take those and retire, thereby continuing the, the trend of Black Fox always being like, I'm going to retire, and then he never freaking does, because it's actually a compulsion. Right. But uh, Black Fox gets away, gets the jewels, Spider-Man follows the super apes, to Red Ghost's apartment, where Spider-Man fights the Red Ghost's apes some more. 
and then tricks the apes into breaking the machine. And then, and then the police show up because they hear a lot of racket. And then the red ghost leaves and he's like, curse you, Spider-Man, you forced me to move. I have to leave my sweet apartment. And also my machine is destroyed. So now you're on my list. The list has five people on it now. <laughs> One of whom is you. Okay, so. <laughs> I love the window into who Peter Parker is during this time, like in his swinging 20s. Where he's like, I have this one bedroom apartment. It's very crappy. Uh, I'll call my geriatric aunt who is mad at me. He calls the house. Nathan picks up and he goes, trying to patch things up with your aunt again, huh? Not on my watch, asshole! Click! <laughs> and then he immediately goes, what are black cats up to tonight? <laughs> like... He's like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put in some time with my aunt. Nope. I guess that totally fits also with, you know, Peter Parker who doesn't question the red ghost he's ape controlling. He's aware of the red ghost. But he doesn't question and he's not like, you know. Super apes? Why? Why? What is well, the combination Well, first, he doesn't even encounter red ghost. He encounters the super apes of Black Fox and he's like, what? <laughs> Black Fox doesn't have super he's apes? He's like, my God, it's the menagerie. Because <laughs> it's a fox and apes. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, but then he's like, oh, hey, it's Red Ghost. You suck. And then Red Ghost gets away. By the way, every villain gets away. Yeah. Wait, are there other animals there too? Oh, there's a no. bug because one of the apes turns into different animals. Yeah. The one that turned into a bird that like flew away with the other apes, it can turn into like a giant snake and uh, it can become any of the things. Were the yeah. apes hit by cosmic rays? No, those are super apes. Let's just, let's just go away from this character forever. We will now. Okay. So does he ever get that date with Black Cat? Because, like, the last three issues we've been thinking about her. Are... Well, there's other Spider-Man books, so, like, he does off oh, Like, time okay. passes and we just ignore it. Okay. So, uh... Why did they choose these stories to put in this... Because these are the stories in which the alien costume does something. To, to anger uh, and frustrate me. Yeah. <laughs> so Where it's not just a black costume, but it actually uses, like, the ability. I like yes. that panel. It's fun. They use this color a that lot. That magenta is great. They use I this magenta really like throughout this book. With the black and the white, it's awesome. Well, I love it because he gets the black on my costume as he's also stooping the black cat whose costume is the exact yeah. same color. And she's team. like, oh, we're you did it for a me. couple now. Yeah. We oh. have matching costumes. Felicia drops a, a few red flags about her mental state, and I really appreciate them. And so, like, keep that in mind. So Spider-Man catches wind of, like, some illegal activity at this warehouse. They're like stealing crates or whatever. They're working for the Rose. It doesn't matter. Uh, but he goes down there and kicks butt while Felicia in the rafters helps him take pictures of him kicking butt for the bugle. Oh. He's like, this is way better. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm trying to keep her out of danger. I guess. Because he doesn't know that she has the, black, the bad luck powers. Right. But like, he, does he know that she can actually take photos? I mean, right. she, she can take photos than no one. His automatic lens where he has to a coordinate oh, the yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. It's like better than just leaving it I guess. Yes. So she takes some pictures, and then she's like, oh, he's surrounded. I'm going to get into the fight. Yep. So they fight. Uh, there's a dude with wielding a big lead pipe. She crosses his path. He trips over his own two feet, and the pipe falls on his head and knocks him out. Another guy's going to shoot her. She crosses his path. The gun explodes in his hand. Uh, so, like... There's just power. There's her powers. Yeah, and they're so subtle, like you can just energy. argue that like maybe they're not really powers. Right. So Spider-Man kicks their butt, webs them up, and then they leave. And he's like, "Hey, listen, like that was cool and all, but like remember, you're just a gymnast. Like you don't have powers." Uh -huh. And she's like, well, I, "I like I think I'm doing pretty good." And he's like, "Well, anyway, I don't want to argue with you. Uh, I gotta go home." She's like, "Well, we're 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 out. We should be banging." And he's like, "I really want to bang you, but I have to go home because I have to get up early in the morning." And she's like, "Fine." So I'll just make out with you. So they make out for a little while. And he like clearly takes like a selfie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's he's indicating I gotta take these pictures today. He's just like, hang on, here. that's for later. But she, this is for later, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> she of course like fills the page with angst, where she's like, oh no, how will I be able to tell him that I got my powers through oh, nefarious no. things? Just tell, just tell him you got your powers some other way. Yeah. There's a thousand ways you can yeah. get them. Yeah. I just uh, tell him. The chemicals you, fell on me. Yeah. I was bitten by a radioactive cat. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's not how that works. Isn't Tell it? me it doesn't it doesn't work that way, Spider Man. Uh, it's a very unusual set of circumstances. <laughs> very unlikely to happen again. I'm just very just, suspicious. Yeah. So uh, Spider Man like develops some photos. He's like, eh, Felicia's actually she's the, all right. She's all right. She's not a bad photographer. He's like, I, uh -oh. compared to me, I loved this panel. And as a kid, I had this I have this issue at home. Uh, it, I just loved Ron Friends. Yeah. 
he's just tired. He's exhausted. But I love like how expressive everybody like everybody mm -hmm. is in this book. Mm -hmm. Like he, there's a few moments where it's like minimalist, and it's like, what is that? Like who's that supposed to be? Yeah. But then there's other moments where he captures like a perfect moment in time. Like, right. He he really likes drawing Mary Jane. So when you see Mary Jane, it's very specific. Okay. Uh, it's also 80s Mary Jane, so she has terrible hair, and she's not nearly as buxom as she will be in the 90s. Mm. What's wrong with that? Heard? I'm just, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> these are the things you can identify as to the difference. Oh, okay. this Mary Jane looks like a human being in the 80s, yeah. is right. my just point. With, with like a lot of hair. Well, not, with or just a lot not, not hair. as much. No. Not, she not gets until more. When McFarlane shows up, and then like, she gets all the hair. Well, Seriously, she, has, she just has straight, she just has red hair. Yeah. Just, just, she has a, a little red hair throughout until McFarlane shows up. And then he's like, Woom, it's Lion King. He's like, he's like, look out, Medusa. Here comes Mary Jane. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> So Peter tells the costume to go sit on a chair. I like that panel. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like where he's like, I've developed film. I need my hands. So like the the, the costume recedes just where like the gloves oh, will be. Oh, I meant like the oh, color, cool. the yeah. color, the lines. He's in the dark room. It's very lovely. Yeah, so anyway, great. he goes to bed and he goes to sleep. And while he sleeps, you see the sequence where the costume goes off the chair, and then strikes. And that's all you see. Then we cut to the city. And there's a couple of bums who are arguing over what cardboard box they're going to sleep in that night. Now, one of them wants, the, they both want the same box. Uh -huh. And then they see Spider-Man swinging by and it scares them and they just agree to sleep together in the box. And this is the first indication that like the costume is alive and it's doing shit without Peter's say so. That being, the costume is going on to Peter and then using his body like a puppet and being Spider-Man at night. Yikes. Yeah. Peter wakes up the next day at 7 p.m. Like, he sleeps an entire day and wakes up at 7 o'clock at night because his body has been being Spider-Man for, like, 12 hours. Well, that means hours. he didn't get his photos in. No. Oh, no. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to go farther away to a Native American reservation and introduce you to a villain called the Puma, a.k.a. Thomas Fireheart. Uh, Thomas Fireheart is a Native American businessman who has made his fortune, and he has a grandfather who lives on a reservation who wants to keep the old ways. It's every Native American trope you could ever imagine. <laughs> but this guy, Thomas Fireheart, can also transform into the Puma. And the Puma is like a mercenary. Who also kills Pumas. He just fights them. He doesn't he has kill claws them. and stuff. Yeah, he, well, he literally can turn into a Puma man. Oh. Uh, so, but not the Puma man. <laughs> not the Puma man? Not the Puma man. <laughs> so, uh, but, but the Puma... He's just like he's getting he's getting his his his, his jollies out. He's like I I'm, I have the warrior spirit within me. I gotta go like fight other pumas. Yeah, I bet Craven wants to kill him if he has. You know, right. I really wish they had done any Craven versus Puma stories. So this is the introduction to Puma. Who's a who's a villain I kind of dig. We talked about Puma before. Thomas Fireheart eventually is like saved by Spider-Man, and so he owes Spider-Man a debt, and so he he buys the Daily Bugle and then forces the Daily Bugle to write like puff piece editorials about how great Spider-Man is to try and like. Fulfill the blood debt. And Jameson has like an aneurysm during this time period. Jameson gets forced out. Fireheart gets a call to go attack Spider-Man. Oh, hey, there's Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah Peter goes to the Daily Bugle, he drops all the photos. This is before he sleeps 12. What's wrong with her hair? There's this like thing up here. She has like these like... It's deliberate. You don't see it right here. It's not really evident here, but like later yeah, on you'll see it like good. it's She's got pronounced. a little bit of a like a punk thing going on or something. Yeah, know. like you'll see yeah. like... yeah. A bit like there's this little thing they do up here. Oh. She's like uh, she's got little baby hair. She's got like '80s rocker who has her hair Is it like, Tiffany? up a little bit. Pat Benatar. It's Pat yeah, Benatar. She's Pat Benatar. It's exactly it's what it is. It's not quite Pat Benatar. It's not that level. But like here, it just looks kind of cute. Yeah, it is cute. So Peter's dropping off these pictures to the Daily Bugle. He's talking to Betty. He's just chatting with her. She's mm -hmm. talking about her marriage to Ned Leeds, who will eventually be revealed to be the Hobgoblin. But we all know it's actually. Roger Kingsley. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Mary Jane shows up. She's like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, hi. <laughs> and she's like, hey, listen, we should hang out. He's like, I gotta go. And so Betty's like, that boy has some problems. And she's like, well, tell me about them. Like, I'm interested. Ooh. And so like, but I, like, look at that page of her. Like, yeah. I love it. She looks great. Panel of her. Yeah, that's cool. But we're establishing that Mary Jane is like, connected with Peter she like right. she's concerned she's still, she's still interested maybe yeah. like or, or just genuinely concerned for Peter's mm -hmm. well-being um, the rose reveals that he's the guy who hired uh, the puma mm -hmm. uh, he gives the puma like a piece of some fight that Spider-Man was involved in and so you know a piece of the building that like exploded or broke uh -huh. and so Peter so puma can track Spider-Man oh, oh. So, they're gonna touch this yeah so puma sits on a rooftop 
closes everything out, mm-hmm. tracks in on Spider-Man's scent, and then he's like, let me get a feel for who Spider-Man is and what he's what, what he's going to do. So he, like, waits for Spider-Man to, like, swing by, grabs this, like, pipe, and just hurls it at Spider-Man from a really far distance. Nice. And Spider-Man's, cool. like, his, his spider sense is going on. He's like, what the hell is it? I'm up here. Uh-huh. Then he sees the pipe come for him. He zips out of the way, lets go of the web line, clings to a wall instinctively, and it wrenches his arm out of its socket. What? Ah. Wow. So Spider-Man's on this random rooftop, his arm's knocked out of its socket. Yeah. So he just pushes his arm against this chimney and just pushes it with all of his force, Uh. breaks the chimney, but pops it back in. Just like you see in every movie. Yeah. And then he blacks out from the pain. Yeah. And then Puma shows up, and he's like, nah it's unclear as to whether Puma is going to do anything to really seriously injure Spider-Man, but he's got his right. claws out. Yeah. And then Black Cat zips in and kicks him in the face. <gasps> and got then... a real cat fight on your hands. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. meow. Cat fight. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't you mean rare? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. So, Black Cat crosses Puma. Puma's ready to strike, and then the roof caves underneath him, and he falls through the floor. <laughs> This is Predator too. Yeah. Nice. So then she grabs <laughs> Spider Man, and Spider Man's like, "I we gotta go." Like, oh, oh. so she's like, "Oh, uh, what's wrong with you?" Right. <laughs> so Spider Man and she escape, and then they go to his apartment. So what the hell happened? Why did his arm get wrenched loose from its socket? Oh, did he because just he screw f- up. Yeah, he screwed up. Like he fell and he just grabbed the wall, but he, the momentum of the for, of huh. the fall pulled his arm out of his socket. So if you want to talk about momentum, just ask Gwen Stacy about it. She knows exactly. About it. We cut to the kingpin who's like working out because he's questionably muscular and or fat. That's right. Fireheart does his thing. He turns into the puma. He tracks down Spider Man. Um, Spider Man like goes, okay, well, like while I was blacked out, Felicia, tell me more about the puma. Mm-hmm. And she gives him like a rundown, and then she's like, well, anyway, I gotta go. Uh, because earlier when they get to the apartment, he tries to get the costume to come off him and it won't leave. And he's like, hey, come on. And he's like forces it like with his mind and then eventually the suit slithers off mm, him. And that's when she notices that the suit's like alive. Uh-huh. She's like, that's whoa. That's when she notices? She didn't know. She just thought it was I like electronic or something. No, no, they do. But uh, they not, have. Not it's already established. Since the start oh, of this. Yeah. With the black suit? Well, eventually she like, she makes him a cloth version of it when he gets rid of it. Because she's like, you look better in that. Oh. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna, I mean, I guess if the thing knows what he needs, if they need to bang, it's just like... It just moves. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... Or it doesn't, and it gives him extra protection. I think not. And that's just gross. That is horrifying. <laughs> and they just convert it into webbing. Because as oh. we've established, the, the <laughs> suit does convert waste product into webbing, and that's how it can be organic. What? Yeah. Waste product? Yeah. So anyway... Yeah, well, the web's gotta come from somewhere. Please. Hello? It can't just make webs out of thin air. It's got to manufacture it from, you know, some kind of uh, sustenance. Yeah. So anyway, uh, while Peter gets the suit off him, Felicia remarks in her mind that she can't stand to look at him when he's out of the costume. Because she doesn't... She can't handle the fact that he's Peter Parker. She likes him as Spider-Man. Right. But, like, this guy with, like, an ant and, like... No. Is it just that, like, she thinks he's hideous? No. Or... It's... Well, like... They no matter like, what he would have looked like, she would have been like, ah. Yes, but also they treat it like she finds him repugnant looking. Right. And it's only because she fell in love with the Spider-Man mask. Right. Not this... But you knew you were going to eventually see him with the yeah, mask Yeah, but off, like right? she's also a little off. Right. So she, she didn't really think it through. Mm-hmm. I guess. So yeah. she leaves. And then Mary Jane shows up. Oh. And it's Three's company. Uh-huh. Na, 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 na. <laughs> and uh, Pete's like, and so Peter's like, Mary Jane, what are you doing here? And she's like, hey, I heard you were down on your luck and I wanted to take you out on a night on the town. And then she's like, whoa, like, is your arm in a sling? What's going on? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I heard it playing racquetball. And she's like, well, we're not going to let that spoil our party. Let's go. Then his spider sense goes off and he's like, there's somebody outside my apartment and they're going to attack me. Oh. And I got Mary Jane here and she knows my, and she doesn't know my secret. And he's like, listen, I'd love to hang out with you. But she's like, nope, it's not going to work this time. You always have an excuse. You, you get this funny look on your face. And then you run away from whatever we're doing. Well, I'm staying. We're going to figure this out together. You uh-huh. and me. He's like, you have to leave. And he just pushes her out of the apartment, slams the door closed, and then breaks the knob. Uh-huh. And then Puma smashes through the window. Nice. And the suit like jumps onto him. Sweet. And they have this big fight and they destroy the apartment. Uh, Puma claws Spider-Man's back and the suit is ripped and then it heals itself. Mm -hmm. And Spider-Man's like, yeah, 
<laughs> the Puma's like, I didn't know your suit could do that. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm full of surprises. Yeah. Holy crap, what's Whoa. that all about? <laughs> Whoa. Meanwhile, Mary... out of hand, the suit thing. Uh, Mary Jane's like, get it, let me in here, Peter. I hear the, she, like I hear crashing. What's I hear the horrible noise? noises. She's like smashing against the door. And you're clearly talking to someone. I hear yeah. two different male voices. Uh, One and, of them's yours. Yep, and they're, they're throwing zingers at like a cat's reject. Sounds like someone's quipping. Yeah. Why are you quipping? Are you smashing at the apartment? <laughs> so... Uh, Spider-Man angles the fight out the window and they uh -huh. destroy another window and get out of there. And so Mary Jane gets back into the apartment and sees that it's just a wreck. Yeah. And she How calls you gonna the explain cops, that one, Pete? Right? Yeah. So Yeah, a, a burglar. A, bur a burglar came uh, a in. A big and burglar. He, he everything. It yeah. was a bear. A bear jumped through my window and well, attacked me. It was a me. big bear. And it was I had the a, bear. And I had to fight it. Yeah. <laughs> a deer jumped into my window. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna fight it, Mary. You're Jane. on the tenth floor. How did deer get up here? They're big jumpers. It's, they like to jump. They're incredible they jumpers. They can climb the fire escape. Haven't you ever seen a deer clear a fence? They're ten feet tall. Mary Jane, you've lived in New York your whole life. I don't think you've ever seen a deer. Yeah, yeah I'm willing you to bet know. you've never seen a deer before. And I'm from Queens. That's not true. She lived next door to him when that she lived with Aunt Anna. Listen, listen. Yeah. They're very. She's seen. She's seen a lot of rats. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Big as beavers. <laughs> anyway, so Spider-Man fights Puma. They end up in like a health club. Uh, <laughs> and then, like, uh... He hasn't gotten the call yet to not do this anymore, correct? Oh, I know. No, no, no. No. No, but, uh, well... We know that Kingpin wants him to stop, No, no, no. Well, hasn't... well, Kingpin, like, in his horrible sauna room, so we can see just how big he is, calls oh. the Rose in, and he's like, Hey, listen, like, don't don't call people without my say-so anymore, okay? You can't subcontract. Yeah, like, I've already... I, I already took care of it. And Puma got the call that, like, you know, fight him. But don't kill him and ah, then leave. So okay. he doesn't recognize his own son. Uh, no, he. I, I think he knows that he's his son. I think he doesn't know that the rose is working against him. Oh, okay. No, he knows who he is. So, uh, and so I'll, and I'll see you at dinner. Right. <laughs> so Spider-Man and Puma fight, and they they get into this health club. They're fighting. Puma throws a big heavy thing of, of machinery at Spider-Man. He dodges, it goes through a window. Spider-Man jumps out the window and then webs it so it doesn't land on anybody outside. Uh -huh. And Puma takes that opportunity to escape because like Spider-Man's like a big idiot in this whole sequence and this whole book. And he's like kind of all, all thumbs. You know, like he, he, he drops his pictures when he's developing them. He wrenched his arm free from his socket, yeah. didn't throw a web line. In this case, he misjudges how heavy the equipment is and like his adhesion powers pull pieces of brick out from the wall and he just falls. Oh, wow. So he manages to save the people from being crushed, but then he falls onto a, like a bus. Those are two really great panels of Spider-Man. Yeah. Like doing things like, I don't know. Yep. See what They're I mean? Really but like, yeah, cool Friends knows how to like draw Spider-Man doing stuff you've never seen before. Yeah. yeah. I mean like there was some stuff earlier that I was like, Ugh. it's not great. stuff like this and I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, like I, this I Puma understand. looks like an action figure. Like I get yeah, it. Yeah, I don't I don't there's no there's no consistency, but when he's great, he's great. Right. Exactly. Uh so but th by the way, the the spoilers, Black Cat accidentally used her black bad luck powers on Spider-Man. Oh, okay. So the Rose is disappointed by his like, "Oh, my father found out." Oh, like and then the Hobgoblin shows up and he's like, the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Oh now I don't want to work with you. Like this is getting complicated. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just you're, you're reading Spider-Man, you know, week to week. Yeah. There's got to be so a new like, thing happening. You know, and and the villains of the '80s are like the Rose, Hobgoblin, Jack O' Lantern, the Puma. Now you're like, what? Where where's Doc Ock? <laughs> Hobgoblin shows up. He's like, you see my van? <laughs> you see my van? <laughs> so uh, anyway, Rose and Hobgoblin work together. Rose tries to prove Hobgoblins value and also identity by like sicking his goons on hobgoblin he's like i know how great and effective hobgoblin is if you kill or defeat all my goons then you're hobgoblin so he does and then he's like okay we'll work together and you're like who gives a shit okay. so his goons are like whoa 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 what whoa yeah. what, uh, so peter changes us <laughs> right so peter changes into his regular clothes he gets a cab he goes to his apartment he gets upstairs and mary jane's still there oh and she's like oh thank god you're okay and he's like yeah uh, you know, the the thing about it is, you know, my, uh, and she's like, stop. You're Spider-Man. <gasps> oh, shit. What? And he's like, whoa. <laughs> 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 and he's like, my goose is cooked. How long have you known? She's like, years. No way. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't he's know like, that's how they what? <laughs> so she's like, yeah, please. Like, no, when I ran away and you got back together with Black Cat, like, that was because I truly realized that you were Spider-Man. Like, 
She's mm. known forever. When she used to live in Aunt Anna's apartment across the street, she saw Peter Parker. She saw Spider Man crawl through Peter Parker's window. She's like, Peter Parker, Spider Man. And so that's why she avoided dating him for so long. And that's why she like kept it on those ar at arm's length the entire time. And that's why she was always so like supportive of him of like leaving in the middle of conversations and stuff because uh -huh. she always knew the secret. And this is kind of like the the the, the straw that breaks the camel's back as far as her like, you know, putting yeah. up with the bullshit anymore. Right. Right. And she's like, I had to get away, and I'm, I'm, I'm leaving you again. And she runs away. <laughs> oh. And he's like, <laughs> and he, she's about to leave. And he's like, oh, crap, my spider sense. Uh, this is the worst time. Has me? the puma returned? Black cat jumps through the window. And she's like, hey, sweetheart, what's going on? <gasps> and she's like, oh, like, it's definitely true. You're definitely Spider-Man. He's like, well, there's no coming back from this. <laughs> Spider-Sense was like trying to be a bro. Yeah, yeah, it's like, bro, you better get out of the hell out of here. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, danger. Bro-Sense tingling yeah. right now. So she's like, well, I guess I'll be going. And he's like, no. And she's and, and Felicia goes, yeah, you should. You should be going. Goodbye. Bye, honey. You don't Who's belong this? here. What's this redhead doing in your apartment, Pete? And he's like, Does she Mary not Jane. know who Mary Jane is? She's aware but doesn't care. Ah. And so she's like, explain yourself. Explain who that is. And he's like, hamana, hamana, hamana. Uh, na, 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 na. Uh, <laughs> I love the sequence where well, she leaves. Mr. Predicament. Yeah, so she runs away and this the panel. Went, Please don't go. Huh. Yeah. And Black Cat's like, well, you don't need her. You got me. And he's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You're not supposed to jump through my window. Anyone could have been there. Could have been J Jonah Jameson, you idiot. You know, I've told you a thousand times. Yeah. But he's really laying into her because, like, he loves a Mary Jane. Right, yeah. right, right. But, it's, but it, he does make a good point. He's like, what well, if it was Aunt yeah. May? Yeah, what if it was Aunt May, you idiot? You, she would have died. Yeah, she would have yeah. died. She would have keeled over. You should have seen her when I told her that I was dropping out of graduate school. So You're she's dropping like, out of graduate school? What? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so she's like, well, I, I never. And she's about to jump out the window. He's like, no, I won't let you run out on me too. And she reaches for her and the alien costume's like, oh, you don't want her to go. Webs her arm. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Does it dislocate her shoulder? No, it just oh. it just webs her. She's like, oh, you, you webbed me. And she knew your secret. You didn't even try to stop her. That means you do love me. And he's like, oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, this is not going he's well. Like, okay, see. That panel of just her being this like, yeah. Amazing. And he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> I should not have done this. this is, yeah. I, I know we're going to be together forever and ever. I don't know <laughs> if this is just because I want to bang Mary Jane or I'm actually seeing the red flags now. Yeah. Uh -huh, what but suit? You want to help me out with this one? Yeah. Don't. Nope, I'm going to make it worse. Mm. Okay. Yep, no, so, uh, no, I think she's hot. Yeah. I think she's I'm down. Than Mary yeah. Jane. She's like me. She's like my colors. He's just like, you know what? Spider Sense was a real fan or a real uh, pal here. And, yeah. Uh, you're not. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he tries to call Aunt May. It's not going to work. He tries to call Mary Jane. She's not taking his call. Yep. And she makes a comment to herself where she's like, oh, Peter, am I running out on you the same way I ran out on Gail? And you're like, who's Gail? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> so uh, Peter's like, screw this. And he's like, he's weighing on like the troubles of being Spider-Man in the 80s, which is like, uh -huh. oh man, like Robbie Robertson is not taking my pictures and the puma has appeared and Hobgoblin might rear his ugly head again and Jack-O-Lantern too. And then he falls asleep in his easy chair and then the suit and goes on to him and then just takes him around. And, and that's he, when they reveal like he's really asleep. Oh, uh, he's sitting in his chair at, like a king who knows the burden of wearing the crown. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So uh, yes. while he is swinging around as Spider-Man, he has this horrible fever dream of being, and I love it because like he's in his twenties. He's in grad. He was in graduate school. Yeah, not anymore. He has anymore. not been nebbish teenage Peter Parker for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when he is in his dreams, he is teenage oh. nerd Peter Parker. Yeah. Who's horrified that he dropped out of graduate school? No, yeah. he's horrified because he's being stalked by this horrible shadowy figure. And when he turns around, it's the costume. It's the mm. alien costume. Uh. And like it's a about- a subconscious knows something's yeah. wrong. So he's getting, he, and the costume's coming for him and then it gets fought back by his classic Ditko red and blue okay. suit. Mm. And the costumes fight and he's like, I've got to get away before these monsters kill me. And then the costumes each grab an arm and start pulling. He's like, you're tearing me apart. <laughs> They're and then, tearing him apart. Yeah. They're literally tearing him apart. And he wakes up in bed as the suit starts to slither over to the seat, right. to the chair, mm -hmm. like where he left it. Okay, why are you moving? But by the way, <laughs> this sequence is expertly portrayed in the 90s Spider-Man animated series. 
Oh. It's a perfect I don't think adaptation I... of this sequence where the costumes are alive and they're in New York and New York is deserted and they're smashing buildings, but they're two dimensional costumes. Right. Like punching each other. Yeah. It's really cool. I don't and think it's I've like ever heard you say anything that positive about, about the Spider Man nineties cartoon. Yes. I know. But trust me, it's dope. Um, it's the best thing about the show. It's so moist. <laughs> so he's like, this is weird. That dream was weird. Mm. I Reed told me to come by and check out the suit. I think I'm going to take him up that. on that yeah, offer. I think it's time I listen to Reed. So Pete goes to the Baxter building. Wouldn't the suit try to stop him? The suit is... Well, it's not overt. Yeah. Like, like letting him know that it's sentient. It seems to be like hiding that. Yeah, the suit doesn't want to give away too much. Mm. So uh, Spider-Man gets there. Uh, it's like hoping it can get away, maybe. Exactly. Mm, Reed runs him through a battery of tests, and he's like... And Pete's like, you know, check it out. Uh, at one point, um, you know, the, P Reed is looking at the suit while he's slinging a web with like what's presumably like an X-rated machine. And he's like, there's no mechanical structures. Where's the web coming from? Uh, you know, uh, didn't you ever ask yourself these questions, Peter? You know, this uh, thing you're relying on for your life. Well, maybe, maybe the suit creates a toxin that prevents him from that sort of logical thought, which is yeah. why he's so into Black his... Cat right now. Yeah. So like, Reed goes through like a bunch of tests, and so Spider-Man has some downtime. He's hanging out with Johnny Storm. Uh, Johnny gets him a snack. The suit like recedes from his mouth. And Johnny's like, that's awesome! Yeah. And Spider-Man's like, I know, right? <laughs> and then they're like, so Reed, you got anything? He's like, so here's the thing. <laughs> it's alive. It's an alien, you dumbass. I suggest you take it off. Like, right now. Because it's a symbiote, and it's attached to you mentally and physically. And he's like, oh, okay. That's weird, it's not coming off. And actually, it's starting to crush me now. <laughs> and so you have the sequence of him trying to get it. Reed, to, you've killed me. You've killed me. And he, <laughs> so he's just trying to pull it off as it's like as it's like tightening around him. It won't leave. It's I don't know if it's actually like trying to like turn itself into a small ball and crush his bones. I right. think it's more like it it's just, just like grabbing on so hard. It's just, it's just letting him know it. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so Johnny's like, should I burn it off of him? And he's like, no. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, that's the worst idea. Then Reed takes out a heretofore never mentioned sonic gun and then blasts it. And <laughs> Johnny's like, a sonic gun? He's like, let's hope it works. It does. It blasts off of him. The suit escapes. Johnny creates a circle of flame. And then Reed, like, hits it with, like, a container. And then they seal it. And they're like, cool. I guess I'll just study this later. And then, Sp and then they look at Peter and they're like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, stop looking at me. You might, have a, not, you might not have a secret identity, but I do. Oh. And they're like, all right. Johnny's like, I've got it. <laughs> and they reveal the amazing or bombastic bag man. They stick Spider-Man in an older Fantastic Four costume and a paper bag with eyes cut out. <laughs> awesome. Then Where's Sue? She's pregnant. Oh, so she can't. Well, the thing is in here either. No, yeah. because the things is on the Beyonders planet. He's stayed behind. Uh, yeah. She Hulk should be here, and indeed she is later. Uh, so I was thinking Sue would be helpful for corralling that suit. I agree, but she's she's not in her condition. Well, why is he the bombastic bag man? Why does he have a name? That's what the headlines call him because when he leaves the Baxter Bill, well, Johnny Storm gives him a ride into the heart of the city on the Fantastic Car. And he's like, I'll manage. I don't have my web shooters because I've been relying on organic web shooters. Uh, By the way, Reed gives him his camera. He's like, this, this was with the suit. And oh. he's like, oh, thank you. And Johnny's like, why does Spider-Man have a camera? Because he's really <laughs> impressed. With the John, you've got like the biggest ego ever. Yeah, okay, come on. So Spider-Man. Yeah, camera. That's a good idea. Yeah. You should go record a song. Yeah, flame on. <laughs> here's, here's a question about um, the suit. Yes. Is it... It's like, it's an alien, it's sentient, kind of. Does it, like, think like a person? Or is it more like an animal spirit that has, like, impulses and urges? It's more like but that. But it doesn't, like, plan. There's which, the thing. Which is maybe why it liked Felicia more, because it did look like... I, I would... I'll take that <laughs> for this time period. Okay. Right. Later on, the suit will come back, and mm -hmm. the suit will start to think. Like, there's a gorgeous sequence where Reed is looking at it, and it starts to make faces... Mm. of like the people that it misses and like and it makes fists to hit the glass and it's thinking like peter and it just it, so it is thinking names but it's yeah. only like monosyllabic so wait right. is it in love with peter then yes oh yeah 
It's so it's like a dog. So maybe that's why he wanted her to be him with, with Felicia. He's like, that'll never work. That'll never last. They're, she's totally unstable. Eventually, yeah. she'll go away. And then it'll just be me and Peter forever. Yeah. Or like, she's, I'll even kill his hand. It's fine. Maybe she's so unstable, I can control her mind, and then it's like he's being with me. That's a great. That I would love to do that story where it's like it goes on to Felicia. And it's like we could be together. Yeah. Well, it could be the three of us. You know. Like, yeah. I'm cool down. Too. She's probably like, polyamorous. Yeah. I'm you, open. Yeah. The, Peter and the, Peter's suit. Right? Peter's alien buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. In anyway. my planet, that's totally normal. In my planet, we just all get in a puddle and writhe around. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's going on? That's yeah. how you make little carnages. <laughs> Peter is just trying to get home in his like uh -huh. horrible joke that Johnny played on him. When there is a police shootout a la Predator 2. Oh no. And so Spider-Man's like, I gotta get involved. This is Where the hell did Johnny go? Johnny left. He dropped him off. He's like, bye. So Spider-Man jumps into action, he kicks their asses, he saves the lady who was like caught in the crossfire. There's also a kick me sign on his back that Johnny put on that he didn't notice. <laughs> And then the, <laughs> and because it was like a police shootout, the press was already there. Yep. They swarmed, they're like, who are you? Why are you wearing a Fantastic Four costume? Yeah. Who are you calling yourself? Do you have any powers? What's the significance of the bag? <laughs> so oh, then he great. like, he leaves and he's like, this was the worst day of my life. <laughs> and he just like. No, it wasn't. And then he starts walking and was like, how could it get any worse? And then it starts snowing. Yeah. And he's like, why is it snowing in the middle of summer? I don't want to know. I'll tell you, it happens in Thor number 349. Uh, the casket of ancient winters is thrown open, and so like it's snowing in Manhattan. Mm, okay. okay. Neat. Neat little crossover. Yeah. Peter goes home, and he's watching his humiliation on TV. <laughs> so he's like, he pulls out his web shooters from storage. Mary Jane shows up, and she's like, hey, can I come in? And he's like, yeah, yeah, what's yes. up? What's going on? She's like, listen. I saw you on TV. Try <laughs> not to argue against me. You're Spider-Man. Let's just move on. I want to tell you something about myself that you've never known. Oh. You, I know your secret, now you can know mine. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, the suit is just like yep. hungering for revenge. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Later on, the suit, will, the suit will escape and then hide in his closet as his regular suit. Like, and he reaches for it and jumps on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it won't stop. It's actually a great allegory for Felicia. So <laughs> then... <laughs> it's like an overly attached girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. They can just put the suit... It, on her, yeah, where she would be with yeah. no expression. <laughs> so Mary Jane and Peter have like a heart to heart where she gives her like fantastic origin story while the Hobgoblin. This is in a totally different issue though. Yes. yes. So it's like, I'm going to tell you my horrible secret, but not right now. But in right the now. next issue, bump, bump, bump. Is this, is well, let's this, just uh, enjoy the snow, Peter. No, no. The, it snows on his way home it and then it stops. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it only snows. I thought because she had a coat on. Yeah, no, it only snows. On his barefoot walk in, of shame. Okay. Right. Is this going to be... Uh, no, she does wear... Because it's that night. Yeah. Is she wearing suits? She's like, crazy weather, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. But Let's it's over. The snow. They don't. <laughs> they don't do that. They don't do that. Is this, uh, this going to be Mary Jane's secret origin? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's also a thing where the Hobgoblin kicks ass and takes names. And Spider-Man's like, oh, the Hobgoblin's back. I always knew he'd come back. Was, and she, was Mary Jane bitten by a radioactive supermodel? <laughs> And that's how she became, like, Todd McFarlane-esque. Yeah, that's where the hair came from. <laughs> so here's Mary Jane Watson's origin. She has a sister named Gail. Uh, her mom was, like, weak-willed, and her father fancied himself, like, a great writer, but could never actually write anything. And he blamed all of his shortcomings on his wife and his children. Mm. And so he would, like, strike his wife or yell at his kids. Mm -hmm. And Gail and Mary Jane had two very different reactions to their horrible upbringing. Uh, Gail put all of her efforts into her like dancing okay. and Mary Jane became a class clown. She acted out. She like really played up the whole party girl persona. She would right. like do impressions and just jump out and like tell jokes or right. anything. Nothing's <laughs> wrong. Everything's great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To take her mind off of what was going on. Eventually uh, her mom would leave. Her, her dad would get this like prestigious award and at the ceremony during and during the ceremony, she took the kids and left. Mary Jane, her mom, and Gail move in with like family, and they just kind of like have no real residence. Mm -hmm. And eventually, they wind up staying with like her uncle Frank or something, who's like a jackass, but like gives them a home and stability, so they get to go to school. And Gail gets really into dance, and she meets this guy. Uh, they call him Timmy throughout the entire issue. Sure. Uh, and they announce that Gail and Timmy are going to get married right after high school. Uh, 
Mary Jane and Gail's mom is like, you're throwing your life away. What are you doing? And she's like, no, I'm going to create a stable family unit that you never had, mom. And it's like, oh, crap. Mary Jane's like, I'm just going to graduate high school, okay? I'm just going to read Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs> and just act. Uh, so they go to school. Oh, Timmy also, like, has dreams of becoming, like, a lawyer or something. He mm. wants to go to, like... So yeah, he, he goes. Law. So yeah. why doesn't he just do that first, and then they? Can no. Get... So they get married immediately. Uh, he goes to. He he enrolls in college, but she gets pregnant, and uh, uh, like she she Mary Jane tells the story where like they're at like the hospital and they're looking at the baby and like Gail's all excited and like Timmy looks like his life is over, and he like hates the like the yeah. baby and Wouldn't Gail. Wouldn't her like dreams be over? She wanted to be a dancer, isn't that kind of? Yeah, but then like she traded them in for a stable family life. Mm -hmm. She like it went all in on yeah. being family. a mom, okay. and so their life falls completely apart. Okay. Like, he can't... He, he decides to try and stay in school okay. despite being a dad. Yeah. And he can't study because, like, the baby's an infant. And he's uh -huh. like, ah! Like, this is killing me! You're ruining my life! And she's like, no! Don't yell at me! It's all happening all over again! And uh, so then she gets pregnant again. Oh, jeez. And... How do they have time for that? Right? <laughs> that, well, because, like... That's all that's, they have time That's for. all they have time for. So... <laughs> Uh, Mary Jane and her mom decide to surprise visit Gail to, like, you know, congratulate her. Uh -huh. When they get there, Timmy left. Oh. He's like, that's it for me. I can't handle it. I thought about what my life is going to be like, and it's over. So he leaves. And so Mary Jane and Gail's mom move in with Gail and support her and their two kids. Wow. Then Mary Jane and Gail's mom gets cancer and dies. Ah. And when they bury their mom, Gail's like, it's going to be okay. Like, we're going to have more time so that you can, like, go to, so you can go get, like, a better job. Because, like, Mary Jane gets a job to help support all of them. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's okay. Like, we're going to figure it out. Like, you'll get a better job and then you'll be able to help me. And Mary Jane's like, no, it's over. I'm not throwing my life away the way you and mom did I'm not going to live my life like like Timmy. Forget it. You're not my responsibility. Your kids are your responsibility. And she runs away and never speaks to her again. Whoa. And she moves in with Aunt Anna. And then things get stable and comfortable. She sees Peter as Spider-Man. She's like, oh, no. Right, 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 right. Okay. Wow. And she's like, that's why I'm so flighty and so flaky. Yikes. And Peter's like, that's really, like, cool that you told me that. Yeah. And she's like, well, it's not like we're going steady or anything, so I don't get too excited. Uh-huh. Wink. Uh, so, yeah, and that's, like, the, the reveal of who Mary Jane is. Uh -huh. That's cool. Yeah, Mary Jane has a really cool backstory that no one ever remembers to reference or do anything with. I was going to ask, what happened, like, does anything ever happen with Gail? Yes. Uh, during the clone saga. Oh, no. Mary Jane leaves and goes and visits Gail. Oh, crap. Yeah, and they do something cool. Obviously, the people who, like, care about that kind of thing wrote those issues. Mm -hmm. But, like, Ooh. clearly editorial's like, get rid of Mary Jane. Get her anywhere else. And so DiMatteis is like, I'll have her visit her estranged sister. That's cool. Because that's something you should do. Uh, yeah. Mary Jane says that, like, she always calls Gail when her kid's birthdays come up or when her birthday comes up. But she's never happy to hear from her because she never forgave her for abandoning them. Wow. Okay. But that, yeah, I guess that's. Yep, that's that, a real thing that, that, that real of people would be like. Would be like yeah. That. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Like she wouldn't be able to see, like, why Mary Jane needed to do that. Yeah. yeah. And like maybe Mary Jane picked the wrong time to do that. Like not yeah. in the graveyard. No, like I understand the idea of like supporting family, and it's like yeah. all about like uh -huh. that's like cool. But like Gail was not being cool by being like, no, you'll throw everything your way so yeah. that I can uh, can have can support the thing that I threw everything away for. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's like, uh, you don't you support, see the cycle? You can support my decision for the rest of your life. Yeah. Or at least the rest of my life. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Whichever comes Or at through. least a long time. So then Peter's like, well, that was heavy. And then he's watching TV and they're like, the Hobgoblin struck again. He's like, oh no! And then he puts on his original red and blue costume that he has a, as a spare. And it's straight up like... Ron Friends draws Steve Ditko's Spider-Man. And it's kind of neat how he just completely draws the Ditko costume. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool. So Spider-Man's like, I'm gonna go fight my greatest nemesis of the 80s, the Hobgoblin. Oh, my greatest nemesis of right now. <laughs> of this, of this two-year span. Yeah, the of Hobgoblin. this book, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Puma seemed to be way more of an issue. He was also first introduced in this book, but clearly not, because he just left. What happened to Puma? He left. He got paid to leave. Oh, we didn't see that really in this book. No, he just, he does. Okay. Right. So, like, for the prize of admission in this random collection that is no longer in print, by the way, uh, you can get, like, a ton of random stories that give you a window into what it was like to read Spider-Man in 1984 and 5. Mm -hmm. uh, which is actually kind of fun. Like, there's a lot of neat stuff where you're like, who's... They, they keep showing me the rose, but he keeps saying the same things over again. So I feel like... I, I feel like I'm missing something here. Can we fill in those gaps? And so, like, you need... So it'll put you on a little, like, web quest, if you will, uh -huh. to go fill in the gaps of Spider-Man's history yep. and be like, who is the Rose? What's his whole story? What's his connection to the Kingpin? Like, who's Puma? Did he really just first appear in this book? That's crazy. What is his whole role later on? Like, what about Hobgoblin? A lot of neat, like, threads to follow from this one thing that you bought because your favorite character's Venom. Lol, gotcha. Because that's how I got this collection. Uh -huh. When I was a kid, I'm like, Venom! Boom! Saw the alien costume! Purchased! Oh, no! I what really is, is all this? This is <laughs> I really like the development of Mary Jane, even though she's not in this. Like, there's just a lot of, like, key moments here yes. for who she is and, like, informing you yes yeah, and that really is really cool and it's really awesome that they're like hey like let's include that and it it helps you because like you're not gonna know that unless you read this shit like yeah. you know how, like people ask me all the time and I'm, i don't profess to be a comic <laughs> book expert but like people ask me like how do you know all this or like where do you learn mm. all this crap like it's from it's a lot of it's by accident Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Venom's cool and popular. Ooh, the black costume, I'll buy this. And then this is like, this is Hobgoblin. You mean Jason Mackendale? Nope. <laughs> Not even a little bit. He's too busy being a pumpkin man right now. Like, what? And then you gotta fill in all those gaps. Yeah, well, I gotta figure this I out. I gotta figure all that out. You know what's awesome? What's it's that? on the back of this. It's like, there's a quote. It says, my costume is killing me. I know. And, and then, then at the bottom, plus, Spider-Man's secret identity is uncovered by Mary Jane Watson. I'm like, that's kind of a big plus. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, a, that's, what? That's, what? No, that's, uh -huh. that's a big deal. You kind of gave away an yeah. important... Yeah. By the way, that my costume is killing me is a quote. It's attributed to no one, and it's just an excuse for them to say, talk about your modern day fashion crisis. Yeah. Take that, DC. We'll have a crisis of our own. Oh, crisis oh. of that. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ugh. Neat. Yeah. Neat, right? It's like... Yeah. And then he just stares at you at the end. <laughs> yeah. You go, bought go this. You can leave. The well, book's, the book's yeah, He's the Ferris bueller <laughs> yeah. I look dope. It's him being like, what are you still doing here? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. Go. Hey, get out of here. There's no more panels. They should do that. I would love to see that. And like, they and the time to do it was 25 years yes. ago. Yes. Yeah. Where like, it's Spider-Man at the end. What are you still doing here? Yeah. Go pick up the next issue. Yeah. Bye-bye. I'm surprised they didn't do that. I guarantee they did. The Rose is like if Baron Zemo and Moon Knight, or Mr. Knight, yes. like, yep. were combined. He's so crappy. The Rose sucks. She In no uncertain sucks. terms. And we get no closure on the Rose's story here. No, there's no closure. It just keeps going. No, it just keeps going. Just... Once the Rose blooms, it can't close again. If you think about what's happened in this book, it is really complicated. You've got the Kingpin in there doing something. With the rose. With the rose. You got the Puma Man mm -hmm. yeah. showing up. You got Hobgoblin coming in. Oh, what's going on with Hobgoblin? Yeah. Jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns there. Red Ghost. But don't forget, these, are like, these aren't connected issues. There's no. issues in between. No. Them, it's well, no. Like, it's, it, these, this is only the issues of Amazing Spider-Man. There's many unresolved. Are they connected? Oh. Are they in order? They are in order of their release, but they left out the spectacular Spider-Man issues that also reference the things that are happening in here and also oh, carry over something. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. That's a lot to keep going. Like this, I, I, I seriously, this is my biggest issue. What's that? Is this issue. Is the Black Fox, oh, the Red Ghost, Super Apes issue? It's so out of nowhere. I just, I, it's just another just, issue. Just, a day in the life. Why is the last line of this book, until then, keep facing forward? Face, uh, that, that's a, it's a um, interpretation of a Stan Lee quote, which was, face front, true believer. Oh, which okay. Is, it, it's almost like rallying your troops. It's kind of like a militaristic term. It, it's a way of trying to turn Marvel fans into like a group. Or okay. a team, as mm -hmm. opposed to like people who read comics. Right. This right. is our creed. And yes. This is our our 
our mantra, like face yeah. front, true believer, face front, like like the American flag always faces forward. That's right. the way of being right, like, right, right, right. This would be a really cool cover. If it weren't for... The fact that these clowns are on the front, if it was anyone else. Yes. Well, I love it because, like, it illustrates perfectly how lame and ineffectual the Red Ghost and his super apes are. No, I just... Because like, they're is, all in fear of the main protagonist. I don't want to hang them up on my wall. Don't you? No. That's fair. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. I really don't. It's quite lame. It's, it sucks. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> What By the way, they're not all gorillas. One of them's an orangutan. Oh, excuse me. Well, is that the one that transforms? He, well, into no, I didn't say they were gorillas. No, no, he just, said they were. He called them. Were. He called them super apes. Apes. Oh, I thought they yep. were all gorillas. No, no, no. They're no apes. One of them. One of them. The orangutan shoots rays. rays. Oh. The other one's strong. The ape is super strong. The gorilla is super. The gorilla is super strong. Yeah, they're all apes. They're all apes. They're the all gorilla. Great apes. Sorry. Well, two of them are apes. Them. One of them is some kind of freaking alien thing or whatever. Yeah. The saga of the alien costume. We finally did it. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I'm glad we got a chance to finally cover it. It was great. Uh, yeah. So, plenty more where that came from. We'll see you guys next time. Another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. So long and face front, true believer. Now you have to include that part in the episode where we talk about face front. <laughs> Damn it. No, nah, people. You could have cut know that. It. You could have made that a tangent. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. true. People do know it. They might uh, think, like, where did that come from? What the, the fuck? Thing? You got to watch tangents to find out. Is that a new thing you're doing? You're doing that now? Yeah. No, it's... Hey, you didn't say the face front this time.